The Leafs fall to the Canucks, and Dubas, speaking with the media on Friday, dropped a little nugget about what his intentions might be come trade deadline day. We'll chat about that and more on today's edition of Locked on Leafs. Your Locked on Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother from TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining myself is my co-host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. And Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from. And uh, you can now watch us on YouTube as well in video format. So go check us out, our YouTube page, Locked On Leafs. Uh, and today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Uh, Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online. It's where the game starts. And uh, date, you know that I do like to place a wager or two when it comes to the Maple Leafs and hockey and sports and whatnot. I placed a wager in this game Saturday night, and I could not be more mad at myself. Couldn't oh. be more mad at myself. I placed a wager on the Toronto Maple Leafs to win this game on the money line. It was a live bet. It was after they, they made it 3-2. And then I made the wager. They're like plus 120 to win the game. And I was like, you know what? I feel like the Leafs, they're playing a lot better than the scores indicates. In that second period, I thought that they were really taking control of that game and dominating. I'm like, you know what? I think that they're going to end up with the lead and then they could hold on to it and win this game. And I got them at plus 120. So I made the bet. Ten seconds later, Austin Matthews scores a great goal. So I'm happy with myself. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I, I turned to, I was at the game, right, live. I turned to, to uh, Frank Corrado, who I was sitting beside, and I'm like, hey, look at my – I just placed this bet 10 seconds ago, and look what happens. Feeling good. What did Frankie <laughs> say to you at that time? Obviously, we all now know that uh, by the end of the game, that bet did not pay out as positively as I thought it was going to as they lost 6-4. to four. And for the first time, the first time all season – they lost in regulation when trail when leading after two periods. Did you know this statistic, David? Um, I did actually, because I I knew that they have lost games in like overtime. They were 26-0-2 yeah. when leading after two periods. 26-0-2. They were due. I go to the building, I get there, and they're like, nah, we gotta lose this one. 26, 1 and 2 now. I was so frustrated. You looked at that stat and you were just like, bet. Well, you didn't know that they were going to be up going into the third period, but you probably were feeling mighty good about yourself. I play. felt good because then after I made the bet, the odds went from plus 120 to minus 188 Ooh. within within two minutes. I was like, let's go. I got positive value. I feel good about myself. And then obviously they just totally – Pissed it away in the third period. So why don't we get into the game, Dave? Um, yeah, so Toronto <laughs> losing 6-4 to the Canucks. Another game, another loss against a non-playoff team. Like, it's it's this can't, this is a concerning trend, and it has been. The pro like, I don't know how I how do you feel about the game though? Because it's not this this isn't what happened in Buffalo where they just yeah. had no pulse. There was a pulse there. They were playing well. I like the, the second line, I thought, had a really solid game. Nick Robertson scored his first NHL goal. Um, Tavares looked like he had a bit of a jump in the, in the game. Matthews looked unbelievable through the first 40 minutes. And at the end of the day, Jack Campbell couldn't make a key save or two to keep him in it. Like, we're chalking this one up to another goaltending performance where it wasn't, you know, Awful, awful goaltending. Like there was some tips and, you know, a couple of bad defensive zone breakdowns and some redirects, deflections, some some bad puck luck. But at the end of the day, and Sheldon Keefe said this after the game, you got to have one of those saves. You got to track one of those and make one stop there. And Jack couldn't get it done. 
Yeah, no, I I think I had no issues with the way the Leafs played offensively. I thought that was a great response from the Buffalo game. Defensively, I had some pro- I had some issues, but it wasn't as bad as the Buffalo game. Um, but yeah, no, Jack Campbell. This was a game I felt like when you're going up against a Thatcher Demko who can st- has shown that he can steal games for his team. Jack Campbell didn't even need to do as much as Thatcher Demko. No. And yet he couldn't. And that's, that's, I think, you know what, that's, that speaks to the confidence level, I think, too. Like the team can say that they support him, but when they're on the ice and you see kind of the, the body language, especially, you know, after a few of those tipping goals went in or the rebounds, it's just like, can we get one of those? Like, it's almost like we need the, one of those. The one at the end of the second period really stung. Like, that's mm. in the final 30 se- – or the first period, sorry. In the final 30 seconds of the first period, you know, a shot from the point that looks like it went off of Brody and then squeaks five hole by Jack Campbell with 30 seconds to go. Like, you never want to give up a goal at the end of the period. No. And, like, that that almost seemed like a, a back-breaking goal, one that if you had to pick one – that's something I wish Jack was able to get. Cause it's not like it was right in front of the net. It was on like the hash mark. So there could have been time for him to, you know, adjust and make that stop or close up the legs pretty quickly. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I just, you got to make one of them, right? Like Thatcher Demko made some big, big time stops, especially in the second period. Like, yeah, he allowed a couple of goals in the second period, but also the Leafs had, seven high danger chances in the second period alone seven high danger chances like they had a lot of really good looks they had 12 in total most of which coming in that second period in which they dominated in and uh what did the the Canucks had 11 high danger chances too so I forget where I was going with that to be quite honest with you (laughs) but like I think you're trying to look at the the workload from both goaltenders like both goaltenders had you know what like Jack Campbell early in the game he had to make some tough saves Yes, that was where I was going with it. The fact that like they both had a similar workload. Like Demko faced more shots, but it was similar quality of shots, 12-11 in the high danger chances. But Demko made that one extra save that the team needed, right? And, and Toronto didn't get that. And that's the difference between elite goaltending, having that, and not having that goaltending. Like, what was the – there was the, an amazing – Spets and Wayne Simmons, which Wayne Simmons, thousandth game of his NHL career – but Spets and Wayne Tim's going on a two on one. And I thought it was, that was, I thought it was going to be a goal. And Spets floats it over to Simmons and Demko slides across and just gets a pad on it, just gets a leg on it. And it's like uh, that save right there is the difference between this game being tied going into overtime, perhaps, and that game being a Canucks victory. That one save, that one shot that he didn't allow to go in. And, and that's something that Campbell wasn't able to do. Yeah, and and look, you know, like going into that third period, I didn't, I didn't think Campbell played terribly. It's just that when it all ha- compounds into a few minutes, that just takes a lot of the momentum away from your team. They had already made a a great comeback to get themselves ahead, and it's almost like, all right, we did, like we're gonna try our best to lock this down, but it's gotta be a full team effort. It's parts of it didn't all work properly. There were some right. pretty brutal uh, breakdowns in the defensive zone, but this is where Jack's got to kind of say, okay, guys, I got your back for this third period. Cause if I put in a solid work in this third period, we're going to come away with the win. We've done it almost every time, except for two occasions all year. Yeah. They've and, at least come away with points. Every yeah, time. exactly. And at this point you're, you t- kind of take a point if if it means that you're showing that you're not going to fully lose everything late in the game. Because even look at the Detroit game. Like, Leafs were in great shape in the third period. It all fell apart. So I, this is another mental hurdle he has to overcome. Yeah. And that's the tough part is that these are mental hurdles I think he needs to overcome. Not ability, not that he doesn't have the ability to do it. It's now he's got to mentally get himself into that position. Yeah. A um, couple of milestones. I already noted that uh, Wayne Simmons, that was his 1,000th game. 
of his career. So congratulations. Stick taps out to Simmer for his thousandth game. Um, thought that he played decently well. Didn't get a whole bunch of ice time, but I thought that he played well. And the amount of time that he was out there, Austin Matthews, first player in the NHL to reach 40 goals this season. Um, so a couple of, a couple of milestones happened there that Nick Robertson obviously scores his first goal of, uh, of his NHL career. Um, so that was really exciting to see that happen. And John Not Tavares, to- John Tavares snaps the streak. And did you, the, the relief when he just looked up to the heavens and was like, thank you. Thank you. The relief he had. That second line I thought was pretty good. So why don't we take a quick break? We'll mm-hmm. get back. We can get into our three stars of the game. And then Kyle Dubas spoke later uh, the other day as well. Let's talk about some of the takeaways we have from that game. And tee up tonight's game. There's another game tonight against uh, Columbus. It's th- part one. Part one of a back-to-back. Night one of a back-to-back. That uh, Columbus tonight and then uh, Seattle tomorrow. So, uh, that's what's coming up here on the show. But before we move on and talk about all that, Dave, why don't we hear from word from our newest sponsor of the show? Yeah, so let's uh, let's hear from our guys over at Athletic Greens because you know what I've I've been looking for ways to kind of you know we got the built bar that's helping with our immune system. This is just another way to kind of keep things going. If you're a person that doesn't like taking pills or doesn't want to have to take all bunch of pills and supplements. Well, how about something that has it all in one? So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, focus, recovery, and aging, all those things. So, yeah, this is something that I, you know, digestion, energy, just trying to give myself the best start to my day. How how could you not want something that will spruce up your life a little bit more? So here's some healthy facts I want to throw your way. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy free or gluten free. It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything. While still tasting good, support better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's one thing with the best things. Athletic Greens uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. So right now, it's time to claim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Networks to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano. Alongside me, I have Dave Morrissey. We're the host of Locked On Leaves, a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast uh, where you can get the podcast wherever you find your podcast, and we're also up on YouTube now as well. Uh, so the Maple Leafs with a 6-4 loss to the Vancouver Canucks the other night. Another L to a non-playoff team, a very concerning trend. And they've got a couple more non-playoff teams ahead of them. They've got Columbus tonight. They've got Seattle tomorrow. And they've got the Yotes later in the week as well. So this is a time for them to not be dropping games. they got to be picking up points. They're currently five away from Tampa, or five away from Florida, rather, for the division lead. Now just two points out of the wild card spot with Boston on their heels, too. So this week is going to be key for them considering they already lost the first two of the the six straight against non-playoff teams well now you gotta win four straight here right you you gotta come away with at least eight of a possible 12 points against non-playoff teams um but let's quickly before we turn the page just wrap this game up and let's get to our three stars from the game against vancouver because unlike the buffalo game where we had no stars for i think the first time all season there were three stars to this game because the Maple Leafs actually played well. They they deserved the better result. It just didn't come, right? 
couple of bad bounces, bad puck luck, and they walked away with zero points. But we can at least come up with three stars for this game. So um, I'll start with my third star for this one. I'm giving it to Simmer, Wayne Simmons, thousandth game of his NHL career. Uh, had four hits, led the team, a couple of shots. Now that one really good look with Spets on the on the two on one that Demko just got a pat on. But I got I got to give it up to to Simmer, man. Like. Hell of a career for you, buddy. Give me a little round of applause. And uh, thought I'd toss him in there for our three stars of the game. Who's your third star? I'm going to go with Johnny T. You know, you got to go with the guy that I, I don't know how he got so much time to shoot that puck. I guess <laughs> Travis Hamannick must have felt so bad for him because he had all day to snipe that on Demko. And you could t- I mean... I gave myself a. I had a couple of fist pumps. I'm usually. I usually am pretty reserved and calm when watching the game. There were a couple of fist pumps in that game, and JT got one of them from me. Yeah, that was a. Like that was a really, really. That was like a broken play where they end up going in on like a three on one essentially with uh, with Tavares in there. But that was a. Yeah, it was. It was nice to see JT get off the Schneid. My second star, I gave to the second line as a whole. So Tavares is included in there, who obviously snapped his 14-game goal as drought, snapped the, the, the Leafs, what was it, 12 or 13 power plays in a row. They won like seven straight games with a power play goal, all with one goal. Um, Tavares, too, six shots on net, so he was firing it. Willie had a really good game, I thought. And then, obviously, Nick Robertson, who scored his first goal of his NHL career. But I thought that that line was actually, like, very active and and – you know, we talked about it going into the game, how we were excited that Robertson seemingly was finally going to get an opportunity on that second line. We were kind of clamoring for it all week. Like, why not see what it looks like? If it turns out that Robertson can actually fill in that role, heck, th- that solves one of your problems that you may have to deal with at the deadline. Fill that, you know, second line role internally. So I like what I saw there. Hopefully that they get another a, a second look in the game tonight against Columbus. But all in all, I thought that uh, that line, they came to play. They really did come to play. Let me just double check and see what their expected goals was um, as a line because I would bet that it was pretty high up there because they were all very, very dangerous throughout the entire game. Um, William Nylander, where we're looking here. So Robertson, Tavares, and Nylander played 10 minutes on ice together at 58% Corsi. And when you look at scoring chances, 9-1. to one. Nine to one scoring chances for, and then their expected goal totals of 82%. 82% expected goal share when those three were out on the ice last night, which was the best of the bunch, uh, with you know Marner, Matthews, and Bunting coming in at 70%. So I had to give a shout out to that second line. Um, absolutely, they were just fantastic. And I hope that now we can get a little bit of a longer look at. Nick Robertson on that top line. Yeah, no, I thought I thought he showed what he can bring to that line. Something that was missing, the speed element, the, you know, I'm just going to be a pain in the rear end to play against. Because I felt like he had a bit of that part of his game. And, I mean, that play from Willie to set him up for that goal. Yeah. You kind of, as soon as you saw that pass going, you're like, there's this is just a prime chance that this kid has been waiting for. Yeah, glad that he made the most of it. That was another fist pump moment, fist pump moment uh, during that game. So, and he's a shooter, right? Like Nick Robinson's a shooter. He can really rip the puck, and if he gets an opportunity like that in tight, like he's gonna put that puck where he wants it, right past the goaltender, and and he did. And uh, Sheldon Keith was very, very um, gave him his flowers in the post game press conference, and Nick Robinson obviously also super relieved. So it had felt like an eternity since he had scored his last goal, um, considering that he'd been up for a couple of weeks now with the Maple Leafs and hadn't been able to to get goals, I guess, since while being up here. So it was nice to see them uh, break through. Uh, your second star. Well, I, it was going to be Nick Robertson, actually, because um, I, I thought like this, this he's been kicked down a bit. People have been looking to move him in many deals and, that's just a really tough thing. You, like this, this hard for a player to kind of, you know, silence. You know, I players usually say the right thing, say I don't really pay attention to that stuff. It's so hard. Like, let's not forget this guy scored fifty-five goals 
in his final year in the in the OHL. Yep. I think it was 55 goals in 46 games. He's had very bad injury luck. He had the pandemic that impact like he has put in so much work to get himself to this point uh, that it's hard to not root for him. And whether you want him on the team or not, you want him to succeed because if he does well, then his trade value goes up. If he doesn't get traded and he does well, that's that's an added addition to your roster that maybe you didn't think about the you know a month ago. So I right. I'm hoping that we at least see this extended stay. I think you know he's he's he, yeah, he would he benefit to playing a lot with the Marlies? Yes, but if he's playing top six with the Leafs, give him his chance because he hasn't really had that opportunity yet. Agreed, agreed. And the first star of the game, I assume we're both giving it to 34, Austin Matthews. Yeah. Um, man, the the play that he made, I think it was what the fourth goal, right? The four three goal where he was just he was not leaving the ice that like that entire shift where he got the shot from the point. He wasn't leaving the ice until he put a puck in the back of the net. Like you could just tell. He was so relentless on that puck. He brings it in, then he's hounding it, and he keeps getting it, and it's just going all around the zone. He's, like, circling back, trying to get into position. And then ultimately, you know, someone passes it over to him. And just, like, the deception of the shot, he just took just took enough, like, off of it to make sure that it had its own eyes to figure out its way through all the traffic and deceived Thatcher Demko and ended up in the back of the net. Like, it was just something else, man. And – uh, two goals on the night. Now he's at 40 goals um, on the season. I just He was incredible all night long, like not just on the goal scoring, but also just like a two-way game setting up. He set up, you know, Matt Marner for a couple of opportunities. Even with the net empty, like they didn't score, but they had a couple of good chances. And Matthews was kind of at the forefront of all that, whether he was setting people up or he was getting some shots on net himself, creating rebounds. You know, so clear cut to me, Matthews, as per usual, the top leaf in this game. Yeah, and I think a final note on that is that play you talked about, that goal, it's something he's done routinely of getting out of the zone and losing whoever is defending yeah. him and then kind of just sneaking back in and getting himself open. Yeah. Because it, it's such a dis- – I, I don't know. I, I've, you're starting to see more players do it. I think it's just one of those things that skill coaches just like – you know, make the defenders have to search around for you and get lost in the shuffle. And it's mm-hmm. such a heads up play, such a creative play that can work so well. And he does. I think he's one of the best at it in the NHL. Yeah, it, it can work against you. And it, in my opinion, it did a little bit towards the end of the game because then you had, you know, Spezza was kind of doing it. Willie was doing it. Mitch was doing it all when the net was empty and they were trying to get that final goal but then there wasn't enough traffic in front of the net to screen Demko. And if Demko sees a puck, he's going to stop a puck. So you kind of have them trying to, you know, circle back, lose their man. And then they're like, oh, can I get it set up for a backdoor play? Like that almost seemed like that what they were trying to do. And not everybody's Austin Matthews. Not everyone can perfect that play. And they don't even like he can do it every time. But he when he does it periodically, it does work. And it, 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 it looks sick as well. All right, let's uh, let's take one more quick break. When we get back, let's chat about this uh, this press conference that Kyle Dubas had the other day. Talked a little bit about the Heritage Classic coming up next weekend, but also talked about the trade deadline as well, and maybe gave us a little bit of a tidbit as to what the thinking or the thought process might be within Maple Leafs brass. And then we'll tee up the game tonight against Columbus a little bit as well. But before we get there, let me tell you about one of today's show sponsors. And, of course, it's our favorites. It's BetOnline.net. Football might be over the season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. you got March Madness coming up pretty soon as well. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC Write to your favorite Vegas casino games. You can head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online, it's where the game starts. 
We also uh, want to thank our sponsor, Built Bar, for today's episode as well. This is the time of year that I've pretty much started to give up on my news resolutions. Not sure about... It's almost like I need to try and get back to my resolutions at this point, actually. Um, you know, I, I got to stick to eating right, and, and, and the best way to do that is with Built Bar. It almost feels like it's not really a resolution because I actually do enjoy eating these bars. And if you haven't tried the Puffs, you're really missing out on one of the best Built Bars uh, out on the market. Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. They're marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolates. Uh, low calorie, high protein, replace your candy bars with these. They are better. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. Most built bars, just 130 calories, just four grams of sugar, four net carbs with 17 grams of protein. There are so many great and delicious flavors and they're always coming out with more as well. This month, brand new one, white chocolate cookies and cream. It sounds fantastic. And it is fantastic. At Built Bar, they are all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. And I don't know how they to pull it off every time, but they do. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right, welcome back into the Locked on Lease podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano. I got Dave Morissuti with me, my co-host of the show. Uh, this is a daily Maple Leafs podcast, so make sure that you um, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Also, you can go check us out on YouTube now as well, Locked on Leafs. Once we get to 500 subscribers, 500 subs on YouTube, we are going to be doing a giveaway. So make sure that you go and subscribe and make yourself eligible for that. All right, Dave. Um, so hey, we both had a chance to listen to this press conference from Kyle Dubas. Uh, what are, what, what's something that you kind of took away from, um, from that press conference that you want to chat about here? I think just, you know, obviously everyone's wondering about the goaltending and what the Leafs could be doing there. I didn't, I wasn't surprised with him saying that that's not really the main concern from him. I think it was. I think the Jake Muzzin stuff is still the most interesting part about all this because whether he stays on LTIR through the rest of the regular season or not, that's going to really shape how the Leafs approach the trade deadline. And really, they don't have much time to figure that part out. Like They only have a couple weeks before they really have to make a decision on how much they're going to budget at the trade deadline. So... I, I still think that the, I, like when you hear him say the defense is really the place that he's going to focus on, um, I mean, it's known that that's what the Leafs have been looking for almost all season. and it, So I I really do think that the Muzzin conversation will really shape how the trade deadline goes. And I think that's the probably the big part that I took from that. Yeah, I think I, I feel the Muzzin stuff was definitely the biggest takeaway from that entire press conference. There was a couple other things, but – to me, Jake Muzzin for sure. And, you know, basically, I think best case scenario for them, they what he said was, um, you know, if we get the news on Muzz that we don't want, maybe we'll have another move or two to make. But assuming they get best case scenario is that Muzzin returns, you know, in three, four weeks from now before the season's over, then that only gives them one move. I was surprised that they came out and said, you know, we're – gonna move it where it'll probably be a defenseman based on what we've talked about for the last little bit right oh do they need a forward do they need a goaltender he basically came out and said regardless we are adding a defenseman and then if muzzin is out long term maybe we can look to address the forward position but the defense seems to be what they're uh mainly looking to improve and upgrade there but it makes sense like realistically jake muzzin if he's out until the playoffs how comfortable would you feel of him not playing for two months and then getting right back into it during playoff hockey? Yeah, it, that's a real, cause it's a concussion, right? It's a head injury. You know, he's not doing a lot right now, right? He's just trying to get himself in a position yeah. where he can start working out again and then start right. getting back on the ice again. That, that is concerning. You know, he has, he hadn't been having the best, best season. He's 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 up there. He's older, so it's not like he's a younger player that's, you know, probably at his peak condition. I mean, Jake Muzzin's an NHL athlete, so I'm not saying he's not fit. It's right. just it's tougher, I think, for an older player 
the NFL back. I think if you ask any NHL player, it always gets tougher when you get older to get back from these injuries. Yeah, well, playoff form is is just like yeah. a different animal, right? Like the playoffs is just a different animal. So, best case scenario, he returns with like three weeks or so left in the regular season. Yeah. They get him into the lineup, try and get him back up to speed, so that he is like in as close to midseason form as he can be by the time the playoffs start, as opposed to trying to work through some of those, you know, rusty kinks in games one, two, three, four throughout the first round. You know what I mean? So best case scenario for this team is that Jake Muzzin gets back and is healthy. They can add another defenseman to stabilize him. Uh, that's what I believe they want to do, which I find interesting. The other couple of things that he did, say that I thought was notable is he went out of his way to uh, credit the third line for how well that they've played as of late camp McKayev and Pierre Engvall. So I thought that was notable. And I agree. I've, I've really enjoyed watching them as a line. It's, it's actually like it's a solid third. Like it's just a shutdown line. Like I feel super confident when they're out there that they can get it done. Kasha obviously belongs in that conversation too, but yeah. right now it's been Engvall with Kasha out, but I feel like they're just very responsible in their own end and they consistently, you know, turn defense into offense. Is it resulting in many goals? Maybe not, but they're getting chances and opportunities and they're keeping the puck out of their own zone. And as a shutdown, you know, defensive unit, I think that's a pretty good thing, I would say. And then the last part that he spoke about, which obviously is mainly the whole reason for having the press conference that he did last week, because he had it in Hamilton specifically, was uh, just to talk a little bit about the Heritage Heritage Classic that's going to be going on uh, this upcoming Saturday in Hamilton, the Battle of the QEW in Steeltown at uh, at Timmy's Field. And did you notice that he was holding a Tim Hortons cup while he was doing his uh, media availability? You got to get the brand on there. Got to get, get the branding on it. Yeah, I thought that that was quite funny. Uh, but he did say that he certainly hopes for a much better response and result this time around against the Buffalo Sabres than earlier this week. We never thought we would ever hear that considering where the Buffalo Sabres are and where the Leafs are. Yeah. Two weeks from the deadline at that. Not a week. We're like, no, two weeks. Two Two weeks. weeks. March. Two weeks from the deadline today. Two weeks from the deadline today. And we got to figure out how to beat non-playoff teams. Lovely. Love that. You know, it's the best thing ever. Yeah. Speaking of non-playoff teams, Maple Leafs back in action tonight against a non-playoff team in the Columbus Blue Jackets, but they're playing some decent hockey as of late. I mean, they're here's the thing with hockey. Like it's it, honestly, it's it's tough to say that any team's a slouch because there is so much parity in the NHL. But you know, the Blue Jackets are an above 500 team. Patrick Line has been one of the hottest players in the NHL. You saw them play last week. It was a pretty, you know, pretty decent game. And the they did end up getting a point in overtime, but the Jackets beat them. They defeated them. So now Toronto's going up to Columbus and uh tonight. And looks like they're gonna be starting Peter Morazic. And that's going to be his what third start, I guess, in the last four games. Peter Morazic. So <sighs> I mean, again, we need to get a decent goaltending performance. At some point, we got to get one of these goalies to give you a, an inspiring performance that allows you to say, okay, maybe they can be the guy. Maybe they can take the reins. We thought perhaps he saw that happen in Washington when uh, Mrazek did get the start, and then he got the second consecutive start in Buffalo, and then he laid an egg, much like the rest of the team. But tonight, it uh, looks like he's going to go for – the Leafs against Columbus. You like it? Yeah, I think that's fair because you know what? Columbus has seen Campbell. It's it's good to give them a different look in net there. It's on the road. Uh, so, I, I, you know, you give the Leafs, you give Campbell another home start. Maybe that makes them feel a little easier. Um, the other thing about Columbus, the last four games have all been one goal games. They do not lay down easy for any of their opponents. So I feel like that's something – that's going to hopefully push the Leafs to be at their best because they can't take Columbus lightly considering they lost them. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with going with Morazic because he last played Wednesday. So, you know, he's had some time off and you, you get him right back in there uh, for this one here. And I think it also tells Jack 
There's, this is still a competition. We want to get you going, but we're not going to, you know, we're not going to force the issue either. We're going to try to get it at. We got to get Morazic in there. He's got to get himself some some uh, sometimes well. And at the same time, you're feeding Campbell probably the easier team of the two between the Kraken and the Blue Jackets. So yeah, I was gonna. Uh, that's what I was gonna mention. It seems like they want to give him a little bit of a better look, but it's on night two of a back to back. So sometimes you get the you know your team's tired in front of you, and that's yeah. what could lead to the defensive breakdown. So it is interesting that they are going that route. But at this point, I mean, you just kind of got to throw something at the wall and hope it sticks. You know, like he's legitimately seemed like he's flipping a coin every night to see who's going to get the start at this point. And he might be doing that the rest of the way if neither of these two goaltenders take, uh, you know, take the reins here down the stretch. But uh, should be a fun game. Is there, uh, you know, is there a key for you to you think for the Maple Leafs shutting down Columbus and making sure that they can get these two points, two very important points against a non-playoff team? Honestly, I think that for, for the Leafs, you, you you see how you can do well offensively if you give that effort. Bring that offensive effort against Columbus. And I think defensively, get you know be a little bit more forceful in front of the net don't let the you know the other team get to the front of the net as easily um and i think i expect the leafs to have a better better result you know columbus is a good is getting better but they're not exactly like vancouver i think vancouver is a better opponent they have a little more going for them so i i think the leafs just need to bring that effort against columbus and really those details when you have the lead you know, be a little more stingy in front of your net. I think you'll hopefully uh, get a better result that time. Yeah, I'm. I'm just looking at the kind of the game sheet right now from the last game, or looking at, at natural stat trick exactly what went into last game, how that game played out, and whoops, nope, that's not going to have work for me. Uh, for some reason, I decided to uh, press get out of that page. I did not want to do that. Um, so this was coming off the heels. This was they played them night two, but back to back. The night before is that, you know, they got blown out by the the Montreal Canadiens, and that's where they were giving up all these rush chances. And then we saw them play the Blue Jackets, and they tightened things up. They only gave them three high danger chances the entire game, so they kind of tightened things up. So I think they need to make sure that they can do that again tonight. Um, tighten things up against the Blue Jackets. Don't allow them to get anything. Make sure that, uh, you know, you're not getting shot, shot in your face by Patrick Laine like you did the first time. Make sure that you you don't let him get the puck in dangerous spots yeah. or try not to let him get the puck at all because he's got an incredible shot still. Uh, but at the end of the day, the Maple Leafs got to win this game, man. Like, it's this is insane. If you, you can't start off a six straight game, like six straight games here, against non-playoff opponents and start that off 0-3. Can't happen. It cannot happen. They need to pick up points in this game, tomorrow night against the Kraken, and they got to get points as well against Arizona. There is no way that this team cannot go out there and keep playing down to their opponent and keep losing to these non-playoff teams. No. It would – like, you think Leafs Nation has been, you know, a tire fire on Twitter at times? If they struggle in these next three games, the stress meter is going to reach a point where I think a lot of therapists in Toronto are going to be overly busy for the wrong reasons. <laughs> all right. Uh, that's going to do it for us here today on the podcast. Hopefully you all enjoy the game tonight. I think it's what a 7, 7 p.m. puck drop. I think I saw 7 p.m. That sounds about right. That's what I saw as well. Yes, yeah, 7 p.m. puck drop, and uh, yeah, so that'll be yeah tonight. 7, 7 p.m. puck drop seven. Uh, I believe the Tuesday game has been moved to eight o'clock, if I'm not mistaken. There was really? That, there was a little change there. Oh, I did see that actually. So is it 7:30 or eight? I believe it's it was listed as 7:30, but I believe it got pushed to eight o'clock. Interesting. So note that time change. Let's talk. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Talk about that tomorrow. That's what we got. Uh, so we'll 
finish up today's podcast. Uh, so thank you all for listening to the show. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast and all podcasts and platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at make underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti and follow the show at Locked On Leafs and also subscribe to us on Twitter or on uh, YouTube, Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll break down the game against Columbus. We'll tee up the game against Seattle. We'll do all that tomorrow, so make sure you come back. But until then, keep it locked right here on Lockdown.